Welcome to another episode of the E30 build. Before we begin, I wanted to show that I'll be using a gimbal today. Hopefully you will notice a difference in the video quality. Here I'm trying to just cut out the small red marking using the grinder and I it is also important to note that this is plastic so it is fairly forgiving to work with however there are some fumes so I recommend wearing a mask. Just trying to cut away the material first and then grind away to smooth out any rough edges. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the protective coverings so I can show you a close up of what a hose clamp looks like. This particular size is a medium size I would say and in order to adjust these hose clamps you would get a socket in this case it's an 8 millimeter and what this does it, it spins the worm drive there along the band. Clockwise will tighten the band, counterclockwise will loosen the band. And as you see it spins in place. And with the socket it is very secure and you don't have to worry about it slipping off. Here is a small sized band or shall I say hose clamp and another trick is you can open them up and add them together to create a larger one if you don't have the correct size. The worm drive stays in place inside its housing you can't take it out and here is another animation showing you how the worm drive works along a gear but instead of a gear we use a band with slots in it. One thing to note that the hose clamps aren't perfect. If tightened too much the center slots tend to dig into the material uh, especially when you tighten too much on a rubber hose so just keep in mind that we don't over tighten them and damage whatever we are working on. Here I'm trying to use a flathead. I just wanted to illustrate that it is possible however it does slip off at times. That's why I prefer to use a socket. In this case I'm using a quarter inch socket driver which accepts quarter inch sockets and for this hose clamp I am using an 8 millimeter socket. In this next segment I would like to take the time to talk about the throttle body. The S54 engine is unique because it implements a independent throttle body design. The purpose of the throttle body is to allow or restrict the amount of air entering the engine. With more air entering the engine, the faster the engine will spin and as you limit the amount of air, it will slow down. This is operated by pressing down on the gas pedal. The S54 uses an electronic gas pedal which means that the throttle body is operated with an electric motor. The gold circles you see in the throttle body is called the butterfly valve. Here's another close up of the throttle body. It is important to keep this area clean as you do not want any dirt or debris entering the engine. So open and close as I pull down on this rod.
Another quick animation of the throttle body being opened and closed. Now we are going to test fit the intake manifold on. Important to make sure that no hoses or wires are in the way and that nothing gets damaged when placing the intake manifold in. Take extra time to make sure the six throttle bodies line up with the intake manifold and with some wiggling we can just pop it right in. There we go. Secure fit. I would now like to take the time to thank my students in the Terry Fox Automotive Program for your help with this build and other projects we have at school and for those that helped clean and modify the intake. We can see now on the brake booster side we have enough clearance to clear there as well as the oil cooler line on the left. In our next video in the intake manifold series, we will go over how to fiberglass the holes that we have cut out as well as how to use a two-part epoxy. Stay tuned, stay safe, and happy wrenching.